Hi friends, it's Monica and welcome to my booktube channel and today we're going to be doing my book haul of 2023. And I'm not one to usually do book hauls because I don't usually buy this many books. But this year I broke my book buying ban as you can tell by this huge pile of books next to me. I got 20 books this year and I don't usually buy this many books in one entire year. But I kind of went a little bit overboard and I know this might not be such a huge amount of people that have huge collections that get hundreds of books every year. I don't know how y'all do it but for me this is a lot. In the beginning of this year I originally did not want to buy this many books. I had like a little rule set in place that I would only buy new releases as well as sequels to any series that I already owned but I clearly did not abide by that, although you will see a lot of sequels in this book haul. Anyways, this video might be a little bit chaotic here and there. I'll do my best to give really short summaries of these books and some of my brief thoughts if I have read them. And this book pile is not in the order that I bought these books in. Anyways, let's just get right to the first book. So the first book I bought was Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater. This was part of my little book haul I did from London. I went to London in the UK back in March for a week and I got some books in that little trip. And this was one of them. This is a cozy fantasy historical fiction romance. We follow Theodora who has been cursed since she was a child by a fairy and she navigates London society and helping her cousin make her debut. There she meets Lord Elias. Elias is very upstandish, no one really likes him but Elias is quite intrigued by Theodora and from there a lot of things go down. Really enjoyed this one, very cute very nice and fluffy. It has Faye in there so I really enjoyed this one. Another book that I got from my London book haul is The Secret Garden. This is a classic. I picked this one up mainly because of how pretty the cover is. There, there is like glossy edges and then the inside it's like glossy pages as well. I haven't read this classic book before but so I think it would be very fun to see what this one is all about and the secret garden that a child discovers. Then I picked up a non-fiction book. This is The Killers of the Flower Moon by David Graham. This one is about the indigenous land that has a huge oil reserve found on it and how the indigenous people and the Americans, I think, were fighting. Don't quote me on this. This is a very vague description from what I can remember from the movie trailers, but I'm very interested to see how this all came to be, and I'm going to be reading the book before I see the movie. And it seems all the Lund books have made it to the top of this pile, and this is another book I got from London. This is She Who Became the Sun by Chevy Parker Chan, and this one. I have not yet read but I was intrigued firstly by the dragon on the cover. This one follows two young children, one of them being a girl, one of them being a boy. The boy dies and the girl Zhu takes his place in order to escape from her famine stricken village. And where she is taking her brother's place is in a monastery. So there, there's a lot of things that go down. I'm not really sure what but I'm very interested to see if I like this one and if I will continue on with this duology I think it is. Then the next book I got was Love on the Brain by Ali Hazelwood. This one I did read. This is part of a companion series of STEM romances. So this one uh, we follow a new couple, B and Levi. B is the lead of a neuroengineering project at NASA and her co-workers are not really friendly and her only ally that she can find is Levi. From there things kick off more as co-workers and that develops very quickly into a romance. This is still continuing along the lines of The Love Hypothesis by the same author. I had fun with this one. It's really not too serious of a book, but there's really good commentary about women in the STEM field and how that can still be a little bit challenging, but we are making headway. <laughs> 
Then I picked up The Fragile Threads of Power by V.E. Schwab. This is the first book in the Threads of Power series, which is a continuation series from Shades of Magic series. And this entire world is based around the concepts of the parallel worlds. And there are these rare magicians known as Antari that are able to jump in between these worlds. So this series mostly takes place in London and different versions of London. I really like this one. It was very nice to catch up with our old cast of characters alongside with our new cast of characters. Very, very fun to see what everyone's up to and what our new villain is all about. And I really highly recommend you to check this out if you really like high fantasy books and if you're a fan of very great characters that you cannot help but root for. Next up is, oh gosh, a whole trilogy that I picked up. So this is the Farseer trilogy by Robin Hobb. First book is The Assassin's Apprentice. Second book is Royal Assassin. And the third book is Assassin's Quest. So I picked up this trilogy because I actually read The Assassin's Apprentice before a couple years ago, but the details are kind of fuzzy right now. And I'm very curious to get back into the series, of course, after doing a reread of Assassin's Apprentice first, and to see where we are with our characters, especially Fitz, who is a protagonist. And I believe we follow Fitz throughout his childhood all the way to adulthood in this trilogy. I think I will be hopping onto this Robin Hobb train, try to get into more epic fantasy. Then I picked up a historical fiction, Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmis. This one is about Elizabeth Zott, who is a female chemist in the 1960s, which is when in science it was very male-dominated, and we follow her throughout her career journey, and also how she ends up being a successful host to a cooking TV show. So to see Elizabeth navigate through her life and the challenges that are thrown at her, I very much love her character as well as the story. There are unique points to this book, um, but there also are trigger warnings for sexual assault. Aside from that, I think the commentary that Bonnie Garmus does in this book is fantastic, especially with someone with the personality of Elizabeth, but she is not the most likable person to the general public, but she is very, very sharp and very intelligent and on top of her game. It's very interesting to see how someone like her navigates the world in the 1960s. And then these next two books are part of a series, and this is the sequels to Bear Town by Frederick Backman. I picked up us Against You, which is book two in the series, and then The Winners, which is book three in the series. With this series, we're set in a small Swedish town called Bear Town, and this entire community revolves around ice hockey. They live and breathe hockey. It's their number one thing in their community that they have going for them. I love the author's writing, and I have read this entire series, The Winners, us Against You, so I completed the series. This author's writing is very unique. It really brings you into the raw and real emotions of our characters, making our characters feel very real as well and three-dimensional. A content warning for the series is that it does talk about rape and the after effects of it, so if that is not something you want to read about, I would skip over this entire series. There are very great winning points in this series, and I think I will continue to discuss the series in depth in an upcoming video. Then I picked up an adult fantasy book, and this is The Shadow of the Gods by John Gwynn. This is based off Norse mythology, and again on the cover there is a dragon, <laughs> so I got compelled by that to pick this one up. But I was very intrigued by the Nordic mythology being part of this fantasy world and I'm very excited to get into this one, hopefully very, very soon. Then I picked up a last book in the series, which was A Curse for True Love by Stephanie Garber. This book is part of the Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy and concludes the trilogy as well. I found this one to be a little bit decent in 
a third book in a series. I thought it could have been wrapped up more nicely and maybe focused on more of our main characters than a side character. Well, this entire series is revolved around Evangeline, who is a hopeless romantic. When she sees that her beloved is actually marrying her sister, she strikes a deal with an immortal. And this immortal is a fate, also known as Jax, the Prince of Hearts. And this deal quickly goes south. <laughs> and eventually finds herself in a lot of mystery around curses, fairy tales, and magic. This one is very YA based on the romance side. Although this last book wasn't the best in the series, I still love the entire series overall. And I really like how Stephanie Garber makes such whimsical and magical worlds. And the next book I picked up was Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. This is a contemporary fiction book and it's mainly based around video games. We're following two main characters, Sam and Sadie. And these two, they have been friends since childhood and they both share a love for video games. They both produce and create a video game that's very successful. So we follow their friendship throughout 30 years and it's a, a lot of ups and downs, but I liked for what it was, but sometimes there was some bits of character flaws that Sam and Sadie have that I didn't really like to read about. But all in all, I really enjoyed this book. Then I picked up a new release and this is Cassandra Clare's Swordcatcher. This one is her new adult fantasy book that is not in the Shadowhunters world. A very brief summary for Swordcatcher is that we're following a body double of a royal prince and a magical healer who is part of an outcasted community in this fantasy world did end up liking this one, I did not end up loving it. And I think my reasoning for that was it was a little bit clunky in some parts, but you still get that type of writing and type of characters that Cassandra Clare is known for and that I really enjoy reading about. I did have a good time reading this one. I think I will continue on with the series. Then I picked up this one on a whim, Fire and Blood by George R. R. Martin. This is part of the Targaryen history of Game of Thrones, Song of Ice and Fire. It's basically telling the whole story from their conquest of Westeros to around to the start of Game of Thrones. So I was just really interested to see what House of the Dragon the TV show was based off. So I picked this one up and I want to see if I enjoy this type of writing style or not. Then I picked up two popular books that really came on the rise this year, which were Fourth Wing and Iron Flame by Rebecca Yaros. So Fourth Wing is about a college for dragon writers and there's enemies to lovers, there's talk about chronic illness, a lot of political speak and world building. And my favorite part were the dragons they were very delightful to read about. Fourth Wing as a first book in a fantasy romance series, I would label it as very good. Um, I think I rated a 4 out of 5 stars. I liked the entire concepts, although the parts in this book that really threw me off were actually the romance aspects. Sometimes the train of thoughts of our character, of our protagonist, Violet, it just made me laugh out loud. It was very funny. <laughs> Overall, I did have fun with Fourth Wing. However, very brief thoughts on Iron Flame is that I think I will not be continuing the series. And with any of the books in this book haul, I do have some videos up on them and I'll link all of them all down below in the description box. So be curious of what I thought about Iron Flame. I have a vlog and review video. And Finally, we reached my last book in this book haul and what I got was Hellbent by Lee Bardugo. This was book two in the Alex Stern series, I think it's called. This sequel took a long time to be released. It took three years from the release of Ninth House, so it was very anticipated and long-awaited. I really enjoyed this one. It really does bring the occulty 
to the occult and there are demons, ghosts, magic, rituals, Yale University, college students, a lot of things go down and I'm really excited to continue on with this series. Hopefully the third book will be out very soon. That was the end of this book haul and I really hope you enjoyed watching it and seeing me ramble a bit here and there. And I did want to apologize for not having a video up for a couple weeks. It got really busy in my life and anyways, I hope you all are doing great and I hope you can also give me a huge thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below and also ring the bell to not miss any future uploads and I'll see you all in my next one. Bye!